Well, we have a full week of activities and uh, this week's commemorations called First American Actions focus on our three regular divisions with whom we've traveled here to France. We've got a group from the 1st Infantry Division at Fort Riley, Kansas that are out exploring their battlefields today. We've got our group from the 2nd Infantry Division in the Republic of Korea that is here visiting their battlefields and a group from the 3rd Infantry Division at Fort Stewart, Georgia who are exploring their battlefields today. Together, these units have ancestors in the campaigns of 1918 uh, and many of the graves around us in the cemetery uh, are, are, are filled uh, with soldiers who served in those divisions in World War I. So where we are is in the Sermelin Valley, just south of the Marne River, uh, east of Chateau Thierry. This is the location where the 3rd uh, American Division made their stand during the Champagne-Marne uh, uh, defensive in, the, in July of 1918. It was the very beginning of the Second Battle of the Marne, which was the turning point of the First World War. Well, it's an incredibly special event for all of us. Uh, what Sergeant Major and I did was we, uh, we had a panel and we selected 30 of the best soldiers in the division to be oh. able to come here to France and memorialize and recognize a hundred years of the division starting with their first battles. Wow. And yeah. so today we were fortunate enough to go to Chateau Thierry where uh, our first uh, elements of the division made contact with, the, with their enemy mm -hmm. and to study how they performed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we just came off of the hill where the division earned its name, the Rock of the Morn. Wow, that's, that's and, uh, amazing. Just, a, just, an, just an amazing opportunity mm -hmm. to learn and to recognize service and to really tie our service today back to the beginning of the division. Uh, we we uh, commemorated our presence there with a uh, promotion ceremony oh, that's great. for the top tank crew in the United States Army, which also oh, came wow. from the 3rd Infantry Division. Congratulations. So uh, three of the soldiers of the crew were promoted today, so mm -hmm. uh, a special day for them and oh, great. for us. We are here today to offer our sincerest compliments and thanks to the, to the local communities who are responsible for the movement of this magnificent memorial to the French and American divisions who fought at Soissons in July of 1918 to this spot and to render our honor to you. This is the ultimate high ground in this particular part of the Meuse-Argonne battlefield and it was a key observation center for the German forces observing the, the Allied lines in the vicinity of Verdun. This position is about 20 miles to the north-northwest of Verdun and so as the core sectors uh, for the American forces were outlined for the Meuse-Argonne offensive, this piece of high ground was squarely within the 5th Corps sector and was a key objective for day one of the Meuse-Argonne offensive. We're rededicating this monument where it's being placed in a more prominent position. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that it's uh, very significant in that the monument honors those 900 uh, American soldiers uh, that uh, lost their lives here at Cantigny in the subsequent battles of the Fraterang. These are so important. You know, we, we need to look back at history so that we don't make the same mistakes we have in the past and we can forge our future 
with the knowledge gained through a look backwards. How important was it having your soldiers here today, basically the 100th anniversary of one of the most significant events in, in your division's history? Well, it's not only a, an event, but it's the 100th anniversary of our division. And so this is where we really took our first steps into modern warfare. So to have our soldiers here in the big red one at Fort Riley, Kansas, representing the United States Army in this really monumental event is absolutely wonderful for us, for the French, uh, and really for Europe as a whole. service members resting here in Somme American Cemetery heroic are the knots associated with that sacrifice. Not for glory, not for treasure, not for power. Instead, these eternal World War I heroes gave their lives for liberty, for democratic values, for peace, and human dignity. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the Memorial Day Ceremony at the Muzarkan American Cemetery. This annual ceremony is organized by the American Battle Monuments Commission and sponsored by the American Embassy Paris with the support of the American Overseas Memorial Day Association. Good evening and welcome to the Chateau Thierry Monument Visitor Center dedication. And I will tell you what a fitting way it is to conclude this Memorial Day of centennial remembrance and commemoration by dedicating the American Battle Monuments Commission newest visitor center. As you will see, this multifaceted visitor center sets context by telling the story of America's entry into the war, her first battles at Cantini and along the Marne River, and of her commitment to honoring her war dead. We have a series of unit days on the last day of this week of commemorations where the different divisions go to sites that have special meaning to their division and they talk about what happened there, they learn something and they interact with the communities that have kept the memory alive here of American troops for a hundred years. This forest you see here is called the Shroud Forest. It is made of 
sequoia trees, Douglas fir trees, and of American red oaks. The American red oaks are portraying the big red one because the plantation is made as the coat of arm of the first division. It's been a very moving experience to be able to walk in the footsteps of those who went before us, um, taking part of all the ceremonies, and it's really been absolutely moving and a, a deep honor to uh, participate with the French. I think it's impacted me a lot when I see how the French people receive the Americans. They still, decades, a century later, it's so significant to them how deep their appreciation is for what we did for them uh, in World War I. Well, I mean, you, you grow up hearing stories about this, you learn this in school, you see movies about it, but to come here in person is just an awe-inspiring experience, to see where it happened, to learn the history firsthand and see that the people in France still remember us and they still remember what happened. They haven't forgotten over a hundred years later and we're getting tours from the people who live in the same area where our forefathers fought and died for to liberate this country and it is humbling. I, I wouldn't trade this experience for the world. I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna make me a better soldier alone. I'm gonna put a lot more effort into everything I do. Yeah, it's been actually overwhelming to be honest. The, the reception we received, the welcome, but also the support we've received in, in every level in France, from the very highest levels of the French government down to a village like this, which only has a few hundred people in it, but they, they roll out the welcome mat, they welcome our soldiers. The French government has lodged our soldiers this week. They have helped us transport them across the countryside. They provided police support to keep them safe. They have... My thoughts are that it has exceeded all of our expectations. We set out with an intent in setting up this program to bring currently serving soldiers and units that have legacy to World War I back to their roots as soldiers. And I think it's made a profound impact on them as, as, as American soldiers, but it's also made an impact on the communities that they've had to interact with during this week. And I think it's left a deep impression on both. And we're able to bring these soldiers back to thank these people here in France who've kept alive this memory for a hundred years or more. <laughs>